Energy Island, How One Community Harnessed the Wind and Changed Their World, written by Alan Drummond. Welcome to Energy Island. The real name of our island is Samso, but we like to call it Energy Island. Not too long ago, we were just ordinary people living on an ordinary island in the middle of Denmark. In many ways, Samso was, and still is, not very different from where you live. We have lots of fields and farms where farmers raise cows and sheep and grow crops like potatoes, peas, corn, and strawberries. There is a harbor where the ferry and fishing boats come in. Our little home has recently become quite famous and scientists travel from all over the world just to talk to us and learn about what we've done. Why is that? Well, it's an interesting story. Let's go. Hold on to your hats. Our island is in the middle of Denmark, and it's in the middle of the sea. That's why it's always very windy here. Oops! In the summer, we have fun at the beach, and in the winter, we play games inside. We have villages and schools. Kids play soccer, and grown-ups go to the grocery store. It's very ordinary here, apart from the wind. The way we used to use energy was very ordinary, too. On dark winter nights, we switched on lots of lights and turned up our heaters to keep warm. We used hot water without even thinking. Our oil arrived by tanker ship and truck, and we used it to fill up our cars and our heating systems. And our electricity came from the mainland by cable under the sea. A few years ago, most of us didn't think much about where our energy came from or how it was made. That was before our island won a very unusual competition. The Danish Ministry of Environment and Energy chose Samso as the ideal place in Denmark to become independent of non-renewable energy. A teacher named Soren Hermansen was selected to lead the energy independence project. He was a very ordinary person too. Okay, he did play bass guitar in a band, but his favorite subject was environmental studies and he was very excited about energy independence. Tell me, class, what are some ways we could make our own energy right here on the island? Capture heat from the sun, ride bicycles instead of driving cars, use oil from crops, burn straw and wood. Imagine if we really could make enough energy from the sun and our crops and even our own legs to power up the whole island. Then we wouldn't need the oil tankers to come here. We wouldn't have to worry about all the world's oil running out, and we wouldn't need electricity to be sent from the mainland. Renewable resources are so much cleaner, and think of the money we'd save. We just need to think big. But do you think we can really create that much energy ourselves, asked Nadja, from just the sun, our crops, and our legs? Well, you know, said Catherine, if there's one thing our island has plenty of, it's wind. Maybe we should start with wind energy. That's a wonderful idea, said Mr. Hammerson. Who's with me? Hold on to your hats, we all said. We kids were very excited about all the new ideas, but as far as the grown-ups, well, it took them a while to catch on. It will cost millions, said Jorgen Tanberg. All these cows keep me busy enough already. Heat from the sun, said Peter Polin. Why, why would we need to bother with that? As long as I can keep my house warm and watch TV, I'm happy. I don't need change. Bicycles, said Moggins Mahler. No way, I love my truck. Why us, said Dorothy Knudsen. Let some other island take on the challenge. Renewable energy, said Jens Henson. I'm too old for all that. Samso is just an ordinary kind of place, said old Jorgensen. What difference can we make to the world? Energy independence in your dreams, said Petra Peterson. But Soren Hemerson wouldn't give up. He called lots of local meetings. There's energy all around us, he told the islanders. We just need to work together and think big to make the best use of it. Teach the children to do it. What if I built a small wind turbine for my family? We're just a little island. How can we make a difference? Brian, don't talk about small. You've got to think big. Talk to everyone, the soccer team, the farmers at the market, all the teachers, the police, the harbor master, the lighthouse keeper, the dentist. This went on for several years. People listened, and lots of them even agreed with what Soren Hemerson was saying. But nothing happened. Was anyone willing to make a change? 
Then one day the electrician Brian Chair called Soren Hemerson. I'm thinking small, he said. I'd like to put up a second-hand wind turbine next to my house. Jorgen Tranberg was thinking big. I want a huge wind turbine. I'll invest my money and then sell the electricity it makes. Mr. Hemerson was excited. Two renewable energy projects had begun, one very small and one very big. Brian Chair called on his family and friends to help him put up his wind turbine. While it took a big ship, some giant trucks, and two enormous cranes to build Jorgen Trainbergs. Project on Samso had begun, but we were still using a lot of non-renewable energy. It looked like we might never achieve our dream until one dark winter night. Sleet and snow blasted across the island. Suddenly, all the electricity on the entire island went out. Everything was dark. Everything that is except Brian Kerr's house. Free electricity, shouted Mr. Kerr's. My turbine works. Tonight I'm energy independent. Sure enough, the blades on Mr. Kerr's new turbine were wishing and whirring in the wind. Hold on to your hats, cried Soren Hemerson. News travels fast on a small island like Samso. After that night, everyone was asking how they could make energy of their own. Suddenly, Soren Hemerson was busier than ever, helping people start new energy projects. The whole island got to work. Some people had big ideas, some people had small ones, but all of them were important in working toward our goal. The Holm family installed solar panels on their farm. Today, their sheep are munching grass while the panels soak up energy from the sun. Ingvar Jorgensen built a biomass furnace. It burns straw instead of oil and now heats his house and his neighbor's houses too. In fact, biomass is so big on Samso that whole villages are now heated by burning wood and straw grown on the island. Eric Anderson makes tractor fuel oil from his canola crop, and Brian Kerr's wife, Bettina, whizzes around in an electric car. Their windmill powers the batteries. Today we even have electric bicycles charged by the power of the wind. Every one of us has an energy independent story, and that's why people all over the world want to hear the latest news from Energy Island. Let's see if Jorgen Tranberg will take us up the ladder to the very top of his fantastic wind turbine so we can see what Samso looks like today. As you can see, there's plenty going on. Now we have lots of wind turbines down there in Samso's brand new learning center, the Energy Academy, where kids and grown-ups from all over the world come to learn about what we've achieved, and to talk about new ideas for creating, sharing, and saving energy. Guess who the director of the academy is? An extraordinary teacher named Soren Hemerson. Things have certainly changed in our, our own little island in the past few years. We no longer need the oil tankers to bring us oil, and we don't need electricity from the mainland. In fact, on very windy days, we have so much power that we send our own electricity back through the cable under the sea for other people in Denmark to use. Samso may be a small island, but we have made a difference in the world, reducing our carbon emissions by 140% in just 10 years, and we did it by working together. So that's how we got the name Energy Island, and what can you do to make a difference on your island? What's that? You say you don't live on an island? Well, maybe you think you don't live on an island, but actually you do. We all do. We're all islanders on the biggest island of them all, planet Earth, so it's up to us to figure out how to save it. There's renewable energy all around us. We just need to work together to make the best use of it. Hold on to your hats.